If you want to become a better runner, begin by running better. The truth is, by the time most of us enter our 30s, our bodies have forgotten how to run efficiently, either through atrophy or repetition of the same workouts over and over and over, we've stopped recruiting the full range of muscle fibers necessary for our best running form. Technique drills reactivate those muscle fibers, correct muscle imbalances, give us back our youthful stride, and help protect us from injury. Technique drills always begin with a proper warm-up. This includes at least 15 minutes of easy jogging and four to five strides. We don't do any static stretching as that can decrease our power and even lead to injury. For the drills themselves, it's best to use racing flats or lightweight trainers. We want a light shoe that will flex with our foot. We'll start with a trio of skipping drills. Christian is demonstrating our first drill, schoolyard skipping, which is just what it sounds like, simple skipping. Stay nice and loose with a full arm swing. In technique drills, we often exaggerate running movements as a way of training our bodies through the full range of motion. Also, remember that we move our arm in sync with our opposite leg. When we haven't skipped for a while, there's a tendency to work the arm and leg on the same side. Don't do that! After 40 to 60 yards of the drill, we jog back to the start line. Then, once there, we start a stride, not a sprint, for the same 40 to 60 yards. This is one of the ways we hardwire our new muscle fiber recruitment into our running form. After finishing our stride, we walk back to the start line. And don't hurry, there is zero benefit to be gained from rushing recovery between drills. Ceci is taking our skipping one better with our second drill, high skipping. This time, instead of just skipping forward, Ceci is driving vertically off her toes, going for some height while simultaneously reaching high with her opposite arm, as if she was trying to touch an overhead tree branch. We land on our takeoff foot, coming back down to our heel before rolling forward, switching feet, and repeating the action. Don't rush this drill. The object is correct execution, not moving forward quickly. Once again, jog back to the start, then follow with another stride. First we did skipping, then high skipping, and now I'll step into the mix myself to demonstrate long skipping. This is not for the beginner. You'll want to have a few sessions under your belt before attempting long skipping. This time, the emphasis isn't on height, it's on distance. We spring twice off the same foot, then switch to the opposite foot. The tricky part of this drill is the arm pump while in mid-skip. This helps to realign our bodies for a proper landing. Our next trio of drills is aimed at improving our knee lift. We'll begin with flat-footed marching. For this drill, we march flat-footed, so don't come down on your toes or heels. Focus on working the quadriceps and hip flexors. Also, keep a nice upright posture. Imagine that you're a puppet on a string, with one string pulling your head straight up while two others work your knees. Our motion tends to be a little more limited for this drill. Ceci is performing our fourth drill, high knees. This time, we stay on our toes, using a piston-like motion to rapidly lift our knees and then drive our toes back toward the turf. Our arm motion mimics our leg motion, and it's okay to lean back a little if that helps with your knee lift. One caution, don't be too overzealous with this drill. You don't want to lift your knees so high and hard that you tug on your lower back. Next up is bounding. In bounding, we're springing from one foot to the other. We're hopping with style. Drive off your foot, aim for the sky, and take off, like Superman or Michael Jordan on his way to a slam dunk. When you land on your opposite foot, you let, let your knee bend to absorb the impact, then instantly spring forward again. Okay. Next up are four miscellaneous drills. Now, no rolling your eyes. I know these are a lot of drills, but we don't have to do all of them every single time out. For foot shuffles, we want to stay on the balls of our feet, then shuffle forward as quickly as we can. We skim over the turf, but move only inches at a time. Focus on keeping your upper body loose and try to keep knee lift to a minimum. This drill challenges your nervous system, and it works the peroneal muscles on the outside of your lower leg aiding that last little kick you get off your toes with each stride. 20 to 30 yards is enough. As always, finish with a jog and a stride. This next drill is butt kicks, and they're pretty much what the name implies. The object is to stay on your toes, then just snap your foot up to kick your butt. Don't work this drill too hard, and don't worry if you can't quite reach your butt. Lots of us Masters athletes can't. Keep your head up, keep good posture, and focus on the drill, not forward motion. Karaoke is one of those drills that's not for everyone. 
While it's great for working full range of motion for the hips, it's also too much hip movement for some older runners. Karaoke involves moving laterally while swiveling your hips and swinging your arms across your body. Alternately move one leg behind your body, then bring it across the front, lifting the knee high in the front swivel. Do 20 yards focusing on one leg, then twist 180 degrees and work the opposite for another 20 yards. For the final drill of this session, we're going to do skip kicks. Skip kicks are not for masters runners with tight hamstrings. If your hammies are tight or you have lower back issues, don't do this drill. I like to call this the Rockettes drill. Skip and kick and skip and kick and skip and kick and skip and kick. We lift our knee and extend our leg on the skip and switch legs and again. When you finish your drills, you aren't finished with your workout. Ready? Let's do it. You'll want to tack on an easy 20 to 50 minute run. Like the strides, this will help to hardwire neuromuscular gains into your normal running stride. And you'll want to do your drills once a week, or at least a couple times a month, during your base training phase. When we were young, we ran and jumped and climbed up trees. We skipped and somersaulted. We played tag and captured the flag and hopscotch. We worked all our muscles. And we became efficient runners without even thinking about it.